They make micrometers that have the little digital display on them, kind of like an odometer on a car, and that'll spoil you if you ever have to use one that doesn't, it doesn't have that. You're going to be disappointed in yourself because you're not going to be able to find your fanny with both hands. And uh, on millimeters, and a lot of you know stuff now that you got to measure, got to measure in millimeters. Is uh, millimeters are measured in hundredths of a millimeter, and twenty-five hundredths of a millimeter is a fourth of a millimeter. So if you take a millimeter and you break it up into hundredths, that's how you're going to look. If you look at uh, like bearings and stuff like that on uh, on these uh, uh, foreign-made vehicles that are using the metric system stuff, now you'll see that it's show, it'll act, it's actually measuring everything in hundredths of a millimeter. So make sure you know if it's reading in millimeters rather than uh, fractional because you don't want to get those crossed up. And so uh, one of the things I would ask the, these uh, other students, uh, had a whole bunch of high school students in here one day, and I said, uh, if you know, you might have heard me say this over at Geneva, if 25 hundredths of a millimeter, if, if, a, if a millimeter is 40 thousandths of an inch, how many thousandths of an inch is 25 hundredths of a millimeter? And people have all kinds of trouble with that coming up with that because they're trying to sort all that nonsense out in their head and everything. And uh, it was kind of funny because they were guessing and nobody really could give me the answer to it. And I said, think about it, 40 thousandths of an inch is one millimeter, 25 hundredths of a millimeter is how many thousandths of an inch? And so they were scratching their heads trying to figure it out. And then I finally told them the answer is 10 thousandths, you know, because it's a fourth of 40 thousandths. It's not too hard to come up with. Well, Gene, the maintenance man, back when he used to be here, came walking through here. And I said, Gene, he had no other way to ask him this question. They're all watching. I said, 40 thousandths of an inch is one millimeter. That's right. How much is 25 hundredths of a millimeter? 10 thousandths. Just right out of his mouth as quick as he could say it. Everybody said, how did he do that so fast? And I said, well, he actually is a critical thinker and he comes up with stuff like that. Anyway, you know, it takes a thousand millimeters to make one meter. And one meter is about this much. Because this is the yardstick, right? So one meter is 39.6 inches. You know, and everything in the metric system is based on 10, so it's not hard to remember all that. A thousand, you know, thousand meters in a kilometer and all that kind of stuff. And it's in one yard, 36 inches. All right, now the thimble is going to move along the barrel. When you screw this out, they've got this threaded part in here, threaded. And whenever they machined it, they threaded it so that one turn, one full turn is 25 thousandths of an inch, right? And so basically, uh, you're looking at, I mean, that's actually if you're using a fractional mic. This is a metric mic. And so this is one millimeter, two, three, four, five. You see, and these, uh, since this is going to go 50 divisions, in other words, if you turn it all the way around, you're going half a millimeter, but the half a millimeter is how many hundredths of a millimeter? 50 hundredths of a millimeter, right? Everybody got that? That ain't complicated, is it? 50 hundredths of a millimeter. So if you're just past five and a half millimeters, uh, you're basically got 5.76 millimeters right here. Did you got that? That's 550. In other words, five and fifty hundredths and another, you know, up here. And so if you can do that, now that's really handy. I've got one in here that's the silliest one I've ever seen. Uh, it actually has a hundred divisions around there. And those things are so tiny, it just beats all up everything. But when they break it down like that, it's giving you a little bit more that you can do here. Now, now this right here, uh, whenever you're looking at this, whatever you've got uncovered is really important. See, if, you, if you've got no half millimeters uncovered past the 23rd, you just got 23rd, you hadn't gotten to the half yet, so you got 23 whole millimeters uncovered and 15 symbol divisions, which is those, each one of these little divisions here is 100 millimeter, and that gives you, you know, that's uh, 1,500 per millimeter. So that's 23 and 1,500 per millimeter. That's not a very good illustration right there. All right, now read this one. Can anybody read that? 12.4. All right, you said, yeah, a 12 and 40 hundredths of a millimeter, which you said 12.4, that's fine because you just have to zero off that work. So, hey, do you understand how you got that? He got 12 millimeters and 40 hundredths of a millimeter, right? All right, you got to be able to know how to measure this stuff. What about this one here? 25.14. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. Really? That's 24. I'm guessing. You ain't supposed to be guessing. You're supposed to be reading the mic, right? All right, then. That's what happens when you start guessing when you start giving stuff, you know? All right.
25. Oh, 24 know. and 1500 millimeter, right? All right, now then, let's look closer. This is a picture of a real mic. Sometimes it helps, right? Okay, so that's five millimeters. That's a half a millimeter, and this has gone to 28. You see that? And that's 5.78 because you're going to add the half a millimeter and 28. That's how you get your 78. Has everybody got that? Is it? Are y'all still confused? Is anybody confused about this? I'm still confused about like, I'm reading the Bernier Caliper. Bernier yeah. Caliper? Yeah. And, uh, that's, I can read that one fine. Yeah, one that's not. The thing on that one is when the dial's in the middle of those two, instead of being dead on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where your Bernier comes in. You know, when you got them lines on the back side of the mic, you're going to see which one of those lines up, and that gives you that next place. Okay. You know, so, and that's what, that's what a Bernier is, actually. All right, uh, imperial inches micrometer. Now this right here is, in, is, is imperial, imperial inches. I like to ask this question, if, if I'm working on a Perkins forklift engine that's a diesel uh, that was built in England, do I need my metric tools or my imperial tools? Gee, Whitworth. Huh? Whitworth. <laughs> Did you see Whitworth wrenches? I know what you're talking about, 17, 30 seconds, 25, 30 seconds, yeah, those are Whitworth sizes. But. I mean, but what do I need? Do I need metric or do I need imperial? Remember, it's a Perkins engine built in England. What do I need? Metric. Uh, why do I need metric if we got our imperial sizes from England? Inches and feet came from England, right? You got that? Anyway, an inch is separated into a thousand divisions here. Ten sets of hundred thousands. Hundred thousands, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, you know, five hundred seconds and a half an inch. 250 is the same as a quarter of an inch, 125 is the same as an eighth of an inch. Get that burned into your head, right? Somebody hands you a mic and you'll say, duh. You know, I bought a mic from the tool truck, from the Mac tool man. I saw a mic laying there. Never had that <coughs> mic before. How much is that mic? $15? I'll take it. It's zero to one. You're always reading in one inches, but if you know one to two, and you can, if you're measuring bigger stuff, it's always going to be still measuring in the one inch range. And uh, he says, uh, so I stood by my toolbox and I looked at it and thought about it for about five minutes and I taught myself to read a mic in five minutes. It ain't that hard to read a mic. You know what I mean? You just got to be able to think clearly. All right, here's another look. Now, if you took this right here and you stretched it all the way around, see that zero is actually the same as that zero, but you're unwrapping what's here. And so every time you turn this, another mark, see that's like he was saying halfway in between, but every time you turn that another mark, you're basically going a thousand of an inch. You turn it a full turn, you're going 25,000 is what it amounts to. So uh, every, uh, realizing that, when, every time you're turning it another turn, it's going to go out and reveal another line as soon as it passes another turn. When you're in between there, uh, like he was talking about, the vernier's on the back side of it. I can actually show you that too. All right, now here's divisions of a hundred thousandths. One rotation of the thimble moves it to 25 thousandths. And this one right here, what's that measurement right there? Can you read that measurement right there? Three and uh You've uncovered the 25. 325 plus 46, 21 more. 46. Yeah, 325 plus another 21. What's well, 25 and 21? 46. All right then. So what's the what's the measurement? 3.46. Yeah. 3.046. Not 3.46. Now remember, this is thousands, not hundreds. Now when you're flipping back and forth from metric to standard, you might leave a zero out and put one in and it doesn't belong there. So it's 3.046, 46 thousandths. 46 thousandths is about what? That's a spark plug gap, isn't it? You got that? What really gets me is you can show them. Uh, it tells them so show me 40 thousandths of an inch with your fingers. You know, and some all everybody ought to be able to pull that up. You know, it's about like this right here. People be doing this and all that kind of stuff. Leroy, the guy I work with down in Texas, says, uh, you know, this guy's an engineer. He said, but when you ask somebody to hand you a seven sixteenths wrench and he picks up an inch and a quarter and looks at it, if that's the one you're asking for, you can't really, you know, I ain't talking bad about engineers, but that guy was supposed to be an engineer and didn't even know the difference between a seven sixteenths and an inch and a quarter, right? All right, so. Now, if it's if 11 millimeters is the same as 7 sixteenths, what's twice 11? What's twice as big as an 11 millimeter wrench? 22. 22. What's twice as big as 7 sixteenths? 14. 
1436. See? Something like that. What is it? What? I asked you this hit last, don't you remember? What's twice as big as a 716? Uh, What's half of 16? Eight. Seven eighths. <laughs> seven eighths is twice as big as seven sixteenths. 22 is twice as big as 11. 22 and a seven eighths are real close to the same size. You got that? All right. I'll have you a pop test telling you which metric sizes and which standard sizes are closest together. I need you to draw me a table and all that stuff. All right. Get it right. What you got here? Now, this is imperial. Can you read that? Yeah. What is it? 7.0, uh, 25 plus, I reckon 16. That's right. 41. Yeah. Everybody getting this? Because your test, you're going to have to, you know, write down some answers in a minute whenever I get into questions. All right. Read this one. Four point five point seven uh seven seventy seven ninety seven ninety six. Yeah, and watch this. We're four short of that zero. If we turn that on out that we would completely have uncovered that six hundred thousand. You got it? This gets easier and easier, doesn't it? The more you do it, the easier it gets. Not difficult to do this if you think right. What's this one here? What's that reading? Uh, 0 0.0... 0 29? No, it's... Uh, That's 39. That's 39. Yeah, very good. All right. Everybody getting there. Yeah. Noah can do this in his sleep, ain't there, right, Noah? I had a girl in here that was uh, homeschooled like Noah, and I was talking about binary math. And uh, that guy says, I just don't understand that. And she whipped up that marker and drew that thing out on the board faster than I could and showed him what binary math was. Because <laughs> she learned it at home, you know. Really sharp. What's that one there? 1.5. Uh, one point five twenty five. <laughs> That's fifty. Because you're at the next line. What is it? Huh? Seventy five. See, you're stopping right on it. Oh yeah. All right. Now this is an inside mic, and you read an inside mic the same way, but it's made to measure inside of a. You know, they have a little jig to hold the thing where you can get down in there and measure it. Those are a little irritating to use. You've got to go down a hole with it, you know. And you actually change the little ends on these, like you'll put a longer end on there. But they'll be an inch increment. So if you're measuring, you know, going out two, three, four, and all that kind of stuff. And what's that one there? What's that reading? Zero point nine seven eight. Yeah, you're past an inch. You've passed an inch. An inch was right there. You've gone two thousandths past an inch. 1.02? Zero, zero, 002. Because zero, zero, if you just said zero, 002, that'd be 20, wouldn't it? And you ain't there yet. All right. This is the vernier caliper. This is the one that Char was beating Charles up. All right. So uh, you might notice I've added some slides since you've seen this last time. All right. So basically, this is what the vernier is all about. It's called a vernier caliper. This is the vernier scale down here. So if you're actually in between, you got uh, 28 millimeters, and then you got you're just past the 28 millimeters, oh, and you want to know exactly where you are. You're finding the one that lines up perfectly. It doesn't matter what these numbers up here are. You're just using those lines, and whatever one of these numbers down here lines up perfectly with that line is what you're going to use for your last place in your in your measurement. So it's called, and on the back of your micrometer, you'll see a vernier scale too. It's got some lines like this. And whatever, like he was talking about, if you're in between, you flip it over and look on the brain, and then you get your ten thousandths measurement there, which is which works pretty darn good. Um, all right. Now, vernier caliper, both metric and imperial. That's like the one I got in here. The aggravating thing about this, you got to have pretty good eyes to get little bitty numbers. You know what I'm saying? All right. So.
This one right here, this is inches here. Although the one I got in there is basically inches down here, a metric up there. Uh, but on this one right here, you see, you're at 21 millimeters right here. You're just past it. And then whatever lines up perfectly over here would be 32, you know. And that's giving you that number. And up on the top, you're basically, um, you're looking at your inches right here. See, wherever the zero line is is where you're taking your measurement at. And whenever you're, no, you know, you're only going to be interested in your vernier scale, you might notice that whenever that zero is dead on that line, the 25 will be dead on its line too because they're both lined up. That's the only time that two are lined up at the same time. Uh, when you're in between those two lines, only one of these will be perfectly lined up. Now there is a, such a thing as parallax. You know what that means? Parallax is when you're looking at it at an angle. Have you ever looked at your buddy's gas gauge and it looked like he was out of gas when he actually had a quarter of a tank? Because you're looking at it from an angle, that's what parallax is. Uh, so you gotta, and that's why a lot of times, you remember the meters with the needles on them? And they had a little mirrored mirror behind the needle. And the reason they had a mirror behind the needle was so you could line the needle up with itself with its mirror image and you know you're looking right at the reading. If you're looking at an angle, you might not be looking right at it. Depends on how far the needle is from the face of the meter. Alright, now read these. This is your test now. Y'all do a lot of mic work at the bottom of the hill? No. They weren't intelligent enough to read one. <laughs> no, they were too. Come on. All right, now this one right here is an actual photograph of a. That's an hour. The metric one is up here, and the standard one's down there. Now that's going to take you a little bit there, but it's doable. So there was all the information you needed right there. There's a couple of them that slide up. This is not put the center. Well, parallax comes into play when you're taking a picture with a digital camera too. You just got to do the best you can with what you got. Got them all figured out? No.
Anybody still scratching their head? Now that one. You didn't see your arrow? What you got? Everybody got it? How about this one here? I'm trying to help you a little bit on this one. Burn this in. Obviously that was metric. Whoever person who's looking at the caliper and not the numbers down there, you're retarded. That's Imperial. And like, once again, this is a zero to one inch mic, so there's nothing on the left side of your Yes, sir. Zero one. No, that's wrong. There's another metric. Thomas is answering his on his phone. Actually, I did. <laughs> There's another metric one. I can do this all day. If I did do this all day, y'all would be really good at this at the end of the day. Right? Learning how to write the measurements down, down, down is important too. That's part of it. I can read mine, I just can't write it down for Now this is the vernier scale I was telling you about. Right? You can see everything you need to see right here. You get that measurement there. That's giving you your ten thousand of what it is. This is a, a imperial. Well, I say that. Let me look. Yeah, that's imperial. I'm sorry. These lines here were all the same length, and that was confusing me a little bit. But it's imperial. You see, it's the ten is below that. Line, so your measurement is being taken right there between this mark and that one. There's 
another imperial with Bernier's cable. There's another one. You notice how you're a lot closer? You're just past your 20 or <coughs> 25. You're, uh, you're not quite at 5. You're closer to 5 though than you are to 4. And that's why on your vernier scale you're up here at 9. You see that? forward too fast for somebody. You're more than 75, which was right here. And you're less than halfway between those two lines. This guy put something together pretty darn accurate. stop there, but you see how I can keep going on this. See that? See that? 950 plus 13. Oh, yeah, right. And all that. So, no, I didn't. I got no. That's one. 550 plus 15. 925 plus 18. Oh, no. Stop on 24. Yeah, it's just dead on 24. Alright, I'll go back. Alright. You got all this. I'm not going to keep us in here any longer because it's time to go to lunch. But you see where we're going with this, right? You got me? Yeah. What I'm getting, this was more of a thing about, uh, you know, burning that in. Now this is the vernier caliper that I used to do these with. See how the little numbers are? And the cool thing about a vernier caliper is you can measure outside, inside, depth. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. Now, this one, which I usually have to open this box with my deck one pocket screwdriver, makes it a whole lot easier because you have a little dial. See that little dial? And that little dial does all the work for you. But wherever it's pointing, what your what your number is. They also have some you can buy at like Harbor Freight for like ten dollars. They got little odometer looking black numbers on it. They work pretty cool too. So uh, anyway, all right. Anybody got any questions or comments? Y'all were really quiet today for the most part. You learned something? Well, if you didn't, you should have. That's all I got to say. Who feels like you can read a mic now better than you could before? What do you think? You think, you think you could? All right. Well, that's good to know. <laughs>